Hi everyone, Renee from Tippy.com here, and we are taking a look at iOS 4.2 for the iPad. First of all, you have here um, your iPad screen. Double click the home and you get, voila, the multitasking app switching dock, just like on the iPhone since iOS 4. From here, you can just launch an application. If you're on the home screen, it launches. If you are not on the home screen, it will give you the carousel, which is a, a sort of a visual hint that you are um, putting one application into the background and bringing another application into the foreground. It will intelligently handle background um, applications and kill them when you run low on memory, but you can also uh, manually manage them. So for example, here I am, uh, let's say, Apple Keynotes. I have this up. I choose to leave this app and go into videos. I choose to come back to iTunes. It's right where I left it. I can also hold down my finger, put them into jiggly mode, kill iTunes, and then if I decide to relaunch it, it will start over again from the beginning. It will not save the state. Uh, some applications like email obviously will respawn immediately, not when you next open the icon because you have to get your email. Uh, but um, other applications, especially third-party applications, if you want them to start over again and not keep your place, then that is how you do it. If you want to get to the widgets, all you do is you swipe to the side. And because the iPad is so wide, you get a ton of controls. You have the orientation lock. That's right. Before you had a switch on the iPhone, on the iPad that would do the orientation lock. Now that is a mute switch like the iPhone. And orientation lock is handled by this little button here on the side. Next to that is a brightness slider so we can turn things up and turn things down. Handy for reading to spare your eyes a little bit of glare. Here you have uh, controls for streaming audio. You now get background streaming audio. So you can play, rewind, fast forward, skip back or skip uh, forward. Um, you have an AirPlay button so that you can send content that you're playing on your iPad to your Apple TV or your Airport Express speakers. You have a volume slider here. If um, I'm guessing that is going to be because it will control the AirPlay and your hardware volume buttons will still be independent. And you have whatever um, application is currently ready to be streaming um, content. Right now, for me, that's YouTube, but it could be iPod, it could be iTunes, it could be Slacker or Pandora, whatever you like. Next up, we have folders. It works the same as the iPhone. You hold your finger down to enter jiggly mode. Then you just start dragging. It will start to intelligently name. It says games here, even though well, I guess Guala is a game. You can click on the name, sorry, to edit it. Type whatever you want. When you're done, you can close it. And then once you've created the folder, you can just start dropping more and more applications into it. We'll just put in a whole slew. When you're done, you just hit the home button. Then you can open your folder, close your folder. I believe the limit is uh, 24 rows of 5, so you can stick quite a lot into a folder. <clears throat> In order to delete a folder, you can't just delete it. You actually have to remove every application from the folder. Hitting the X here will delete the app. It won't remove it from the folder, so you have to make sure that you actually pull all of these apps out of the folder, which is a little annoying. It would be nice if you could just delete folders, but hopefully once you set them up, you won't be doing too much. Uh, moving around. And you can also do this on iTunes on your Mac or PC or Windows PC, so uh, it would be a bit faster there. And when you get rid of the last application, poof, there goes your folder. Game Center has been on the iPhone. It is now on the iPad. So uh, you have your profile, you have your friends, have your games, have your requests, and um, you, it actually can get quite interesting. So 
Angry Birds, you see the ranks, the achievements, recently played, you can tell a friend, total score today, this week. It's a much broader interface than the iPhone, so you can see a lot more at the same time. So your leaderboards here. I can switch to achievements. You get a whole list of what's going on. So, uh, yeah, if you are a big gamer especially, that is good. Curiously, uh, Ping uh, seems to still be absent. I don't know if they will be adding Ping to the iTunes app like they did on the iPhone, but um, it is not there right now. Okay, there are a couple other interesting features, and a good place to check them out is inside Safari. So here we go. We have uh, tippy.com. Maybe you heard of it. And here's our iOS 4.2 for iPhone walkthrough. I have a YouTube video here. I can click on it. Loading the movie, and here we have AirPlay. Almost any app that uses the standard controls is going to be able to use AirPlay. Hey everyone, and they have it on the iPad call. here. I can click a button. 4.2 for the iPhone. And now it's playing through the Apple TV to my left. First and foremost, click a button again. Texting and it's back on the iPad. It will be doing full video. I'm assuming the... Let's quiet this down. I am assuming it will require an Apple TV uh, update to bring that to 4.2 as well, but that is where the feature lies. The plus button has been replaced with a more standard action button, and one of the items on that action button is print now, and this is... You just saw the air play, now this is the air print. You can select a printer, the number of copies, and print. I don't have a uh, compatible printer yet, so it's not going to find anything, but that is where the options will be, and a little print service will spool up in the multitasking app switcher UI. Another great addition, if I go to the Google search, and I um, just clear it out, and I type in something, I... Uh, I scroll down, it'll say find on this page. I'll just finish typing iPhone. On this page, 68 matches, I hit one of them. It will highlight the first match in yellow, sort of like it does on the Mac Safari. And then down here at the bottom, I can update the search. I, I can also go to next. It'll find the next version, and I can keep paging through. When I'm done, I just hit done. And I'm there. So that's a great way, especially if you're reading long articles or, you know, any long form text, be able to quickly find what you want. We used to use JavaScript bookmarklets for that. It is much better to finally have it embedded here. As always, there are a few new things in settings. Uh, you have a bunch of new wallpapers. It brings it right up in line with what the iOS 4 for iPhone and iPod Touch have. Um, there are some functional additions, so for example, restrictions. You now have to allow changes to location and accounts, and you can prevent people from deleting apps so your kids don't uh, you know, delete everything, including your high score for uh, Cut the Rope. You also can remove the ability to add friends from Game Center if you want your kids to play without having uh, friend requests or the social aspect of online play. Notes, um, you can now choose between Chalkboard, Helvetica, or Marker Felt, so the uh, age of Marker Felt dominance is uh, slowly changing. There are now threaded emails and universal inboxes in mail. So here you have all inboxes. That'll show you all the email that is in every one of your accounts. Your accounts are listed here, MobileMe, Google, Google Mail, and Exchange. I just have a few set up. The Google one is via ActiveSync. Google Mail is via IMAPT so that you could see the differences. And they have nice little icons to tell them apart now. Exchange, all inboxes it means all new messages from any of the inboxes. Or you can go into the individual inboxes. So for example, I can go into here and uh, see a bunch of different email boxes. Um, the messages are threaded. So for example, here I got spammy spam from a spammy spam spammer, and instead of having them all through my inbox, they are all nicely collected here. Um, and instead of a delete button now, of course, you have an archive button, and you can archive the entire thread, or you can just go through and, you know, get rid of them. It's nice to have them all organized like that.